Hi, well, this is part three of the old drill press restoration. If you do like it, do give me a thumbs up, do subscribe, do share with your friends. Also check out parts one and two. In this part, I'm gonna get all the parts primed, painted and prepared. So let's get all these parts outside and get them primed up. Well, just leave the casing to be done now. It's actually quite well ventilated in here. I've got all the windows open. There's a lovely breeze coming through the back door. I've got the fan blowing away. And I've got the front roller shutter open. So yeah, plenty of ventilation. That's why I'm not wearing my mask and it's bloody hot. And I'm only doing a little bit, it's virtually empty now. But I'm gonna go and get another one. I'm not gonna say, oh, that'll do. I'll, I want plenty of coats on this top uh, housing. And also I want plenty of coats of red. So let's do it properly, shall we? We'll go and get some more primer tomorrow. Let's get this last bit painted and it's the pulley casing. Psst, I've already done the priming. I've done about three coats of red on the underside. Okay, let's get the side and the top done in red.
Oh, what have you done? You painted it red. <laughs> yeah. Now I did actually give it a prime underneath the red and then I put the red on. My aim is to highlight the craters. I'm going to call them the craters. Highlight the craters. You know, just as a warning for other people who want to use it if I get rid of it or I die and someone inherits it. <laughs> do not do this. See the red. Danger. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Let's see how it works out, yeah? Well, it's time to get the motor stripped down and uh, reconditioned. Just check everything out. And it's in good working order, like I said. So, we'll just clean it all up, make sure it's all uh, functioning correctly, and we'll give it a good coat of primer and paint. Okay, let's get cracking. Well, I think that's going to need some kind of pulley. It's loose, but it ain't coming off. And there's no real up and down movement, so I believe this is on the shaft. I mean, it's aluminium, so I don't really want to go levering off with the uh, screwdrivers and, you know, all sorts. Tiny scallop there little cut out so you know it's designed to have something wedge it off but you know I can get that in there and it's it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere Voila! And isn't that such a sorry sight? I think these are insects in there. Yeah. There's a lot of oxidisation, a lot of corrosion. I think that's just the aluminium itself, so... It doesn't look too bad, doesn't spin too bad. Let's check these bearings out. There's no play on them whatsoever. So, they're good. I'm not inclined to change them. Let's check the other one out of the back. Well, again, that seems like it's well on there for some reason. It's sort of bouncing off. It's still attached to the shaft. Let's see if we can get in there with some penetrating oil. Well, I managed to get this end off in the end, so I'll show you what I did. I was able to knock this out. It was this plate here that was holding it in. And this 
as I knocked this out it damaged all this and it bent it so I had to bend all this back but yeah I'm not going to take this uh, winding out I mean this looks like it's stuck right in there uh, there's not a lot wrong with it I can get in here with a wire wheel and some emery paper clean all this up so yeah I'm gonna leave that as it is I'm not gonna strip it down any further but yeah this was stuck on here let's just take take this off these um, induction motors they actually need a, a sort of a primary power source to get them started I'm not overly sure what the terminology is or the names of it but I'm no engineer I'm no electrical engineer anyway but this actually creates a contact here don't know if you can see that so this is spring loaded and it sits on here now once the motor's up to speed centrifugal force pulls that down which in turn switches this off so you know it needs a primary power source just to get it going but once it's going it cuts that off again like I say I'm not an electrical engineer I don't know the terminology but I'm sure there is some but yeah the problem was the bearing was stuck not just on the shaft it was actually stuck in the end housing here so yeah the bearing was stuck in there and stuck on the shaft uh, what I actually had to do in the end I drilled two little holes in the end I'm not sure if this is the right way to do it but I had no other option and this bearing is knackered quite frankly it's uh, it's lumpy it's grindy uh, it's a lot of play in it and it needed changing gonna have to change this one too but I'm having a job getting this one off as well so I'm probably gonna cut, cut this one off so yeah that was the problem so what I did I used a small punch just to punch it out so once the new bearings back in place I'm gonna seal these off with some chemical metal but that was my only other option other than to get a new motor okay let's get all this cleaned up get the new bearings put back in and get it reassembled I'm not sure what color I'm gonna paint it probably silver so yeah let's get cracking shall we Okay, as you can see, this wire wheel fits almost perfectly in there. A little bit of play is what we need. So let's give this winding a clean. Okay, you have to be very, very careful not to damage any of the uh, copper coated wire. So I'll get my wheel down in there before starting it off. Okay, as you can see in there, all the surface rust cleaned off of that great stuff
I'll tell you what, that degreaser is wicked stuff, it really is. I would highly recommend that. No. Done a cracking job. Sounds like my neighbour's at it again, cutting the grass for his cows. Sorry about the noise. Okay, I'm going to chuck this out in the sun to dry <laughs> before it uh, starts to go rusty. And then we can crack on getting the primer done on the outside. Let's get cracking. Well, there you go. I've done the grey primer. I've given them about three or four coats each. I think they look all right. Uh, I'm not sure the color yet. Um, I'm thinking it's silver, but there again, you know, I've got a couple of cans of gold spray going, so I might do it gold, see what it looks like. Anyway, first bearing came out, as you know, rusty as hell, grindy as hell, scrap. Uh, second bearing wouldn't come off, so I actually cut it off with a grinder, took the outer race off, bearings came out and I had to slightly touch the uh, shaft in cutting the inner race off but it came off okay so yeah got two new sets of bearings lovely okay they're lovely so I'm gonna press these in the casings I've got myself a nice socket it's about a millimetre smaller. So let's punch that in. I've already done this one. I'm not sure uh, if that was a good idea because I've already sprayed it and the spray's gone on the bearing, but you know, I'll clean that off. But it does feel good. I'm not gonna try and spin it and ruin the paint. Yeah, I think I might even be that press that with my fingers to a certain point Okay, job done. Okay, and it spins nicely, there's no movement there. So I think we should get these painted. I'm not going to paint this bit because it's going to be on the inside of the uh, armature here, but I'm going to give it all a little spray with light oil. I'm not going to do it here, obviously, because I don't want grease on my uh, primer. But yeah, just uh, lube up all the working parts. I'll give this a spray here. Oh, there's a bit of the old bearing. I did actually take a slight, tiny, tiny nick of the shaft here. And I mean, it is small. It's only about three mil, and it's 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 not deep at all, but. This is where the bearing is going to sit. So I don't think it should affect it. So yeah, let's get this greased up. Let's get these outer pieces painted up and we'll get it all back together. Bang, there you go. Gold is gold. I've used two different types of colour. I've used sort of the nine carat gold look on the ends. And I've used the sort of the 24 karat gold, yellowy gold on the body. It's good though, doesn't it? I've actually wired it up. So we'll plug it in, we'll give it a go. Just pop you on the uh, vice for a sec and we'll plug this in. Voila! 
There's a bit of vibration, but there you go. It's only on the, oh, that's quite heavy. Only on the bench and on the polystyrene. Sounds good, doesn't it? Nice and quiet. So it was those bearings that were making the noise in the beginning. Okay, and you can hear the secondary switch cut out there as the centrifuge comes back in. Brilliant. It's working and it looks good. Uh, this label here is a bit shot, but I found one online, so I'm going to try and print one off and stick it over the top. So what we'll do, we'll put that to one side. I'll go and show you all the other pieces that I've painted and we can start reassembling it. And there we have it. This has all had, uh, I think, two or three days to harden off. A few fingerprints all over it, but they come off. I think it looks great. There's only one more thing that I really do need to do, and that is the post. So this post really needs rubbing down a lot more. I've done the bottom, I'm quite happy with the red, but as you can see, the actual steel is still rusty with a few marks on now. Like one of my subscribers mentioned, sitting there and rubbing it just by hand is very, very difficult. What I need to do, I need to try and get this in some kind of drill and get it spinning. So I've got an idea. Got two spare bearings. So what I'm going to do is try and mount them in such a way, one here, one there. Uh, I'm going to try and fix a piece of wood to this end going to use one of my hole cutting drills ah, yeah, I got it already so I'm going to drill that into the center of the wood probably use this chipboard probably cut it down the center double it up but yeah if we can use this down the center as soon as the teeth on this grip then it's going to start spinning this isn't going to cut into the wood any further just an idea but we'll see how it goes shall we well, there you go I've rigged up a system that I can now put the uh, tubular stand on and clean it up just go over what I've done here basically I've taken four washers or four spacers these are off of a stabilizing arm for the uh, my old high ace van when I changed the suspension I always keep bits like that because they come in handy but anyway these are holding the inner race which allows the outer race to spin free and I've clamped these very very tightly I've rigged up another two bearings on a piece of chipboard I've cut a slot out and again I've used nuts and spacers and washers just to rig it up it's only a temporary affair I'm not going to be doing this day in day out but anyway I'll screw this piece of uh, chipboard to a piece of metal and I've screwed that down to the workbench does it work? well let's have a look Ooh, it's quite heavy okay what I've done with the base of the post like I said earlier I've put it on two pieces of uh, sandwiched chipboard I did use the uh, hole cutter but I found out even with the spin of this it was actually cutting a hole <laughs> so that was no good so I used this drill bit I piloted a hole down the middle and I stuck a bolt in there now the bolts not actually perfectly central so there is a little bit of a wobble on the drill but there you go it works as you can see I've done this end using this method and if you look at that against doing it by hand look at the difference it is uh, amazing I don't think you're ever going to get this sort of finish by going over it with your hand like that in fact it gives an ununiform finish not nice done this end as well and it looks great do you want to see it in action? Okay, what I actually did, I took a, a socket bar and I cut the end off. This was an old spare one I had. I've got two other ones, so sacrificial, as they say. I cut that off, put it on a 14mm socket, 
which fits onto the bolt. This goes into the end of the drill. Right, so I'm gonna pop you on the uh, tripod now. Give me your hands free. Although this goes around freely, I haven't actually got anything to stop it going left and right. So it's just something I'm gonna to have to keep my eye on as I go. And I keep the tension down, stop it slipping off, just by keeping my hand on the top. Hopefully you can see the difference already. It produces a lovely finish. Uh, this is gonna take me a couple of minutes to do, you know, so although this took me over an hour to build, I'm only gonna to need to use it for about 10 minutes. But like I say, it saves a lot of work and it produces a wonderful finish. Let's get cracking. I don't know if you can see the difference where you are up there, but let me bring you in a bit closer. I actually changed the bolt on the end. This is an old saddle bolt I had. Uh, the bolt I was using was actually going into the wood. And of course there's nothing in here to stop it, so I changed it for this one. But anyway, we're done now. Shiny, shiny. Yeah, nice and shiny now. I'm gonna give this a going over with a bit of light oil. Just to stop it rusting. And we're done. It's great. Looks like new. <laughs> I'm not sure who it was that gave me the idea. Um, I know I watched a video where he did it. Uh, and I think one of my subscribers also mentioned it as well. So, you know, thanks to you both. I've still got the table to finish. I've sprayed the underside with a sort of an aluminium paint. I'm gonna rub all this back to metal, leave the craters in red as a warning to others. <laughs> uh, I've got the electrical wiring to finish. Gonna change all this, gonna re, uh, redo it all. Uh, got all the hardware to clean up, so there's still a little bit more to do before I can even start the assembly. So I'm probably gonna do that as part four. And I'm gonna wind this up as part three. So if you did like part three, restoration of the old drill press do check out parts one and two do check out my garage and workshop build uh, do check out my other videos and give me a like do subscribe if you haven't uh, share with your friends and i'll see you next time